Okay, so your company is adopting Scrum, and now you have to learn a bunch of irritating new buzzwords. I know what you're thinking. No, I don't want no Scrum. A Scrum is a time that don't get no love from me. Do not worry, I have learned these buzzwords. I will share with you their terrible meanings. We will get through this together. Agile is the core idea that your software should be developed in an iterative fashion, focused on delivering a working demo very quickly, and then repeatedly iterating on that prototype again and again until it's a workable final product. The key takeaway from Agile is simple. Don't go chasing waterfall. Stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Agile is not a process. It's a philosophy. A philosophy that specifically discourages process. But without process, we have to think really hard about how to do this right. And that sucks, so we're going to need to immediately ignore that Agile discourages process and come up with a whole bunch of processes that let us feel Agile while still telling us exactly what to do. That's where Scrum comes in. Agile is the interface, and Scrum is the concrete implementation. Other, less popular concrete implementations of Agile include XP, Vista, Waterfall Masquerading as Agile, and Mario Kart. One of the key failings of Waterfall is that it tries to predict very far into the future, which is very inaccurate. Scrum then focuses on trying to accurately predict about two weeks into the future. The Scrum defines a single two-week iteration as a sprint to further drive home the association between software development and very bad cell phone customer service. Scrum contains the following mandatory roles. The product owner represents the customer of your product. As much as possible, it's best if your product owner actually be the customer of your product, but that might not necessarily be possible. If, for example, your product serves a large number of customers at once, it's recommended that you fuse them together under spectacular heat to form one giant super customer. On the other hand, if your product is too new to have customers, you may need to erect an oracle or small shrine to represent them. The Scrum Master is the person who knows Scrum on the team. They help everybody cope with the process and try their best to keep scut work out of the hands of the team. The third mandatory role is everybody else. Their responsibility is not to be the product owner or scrum master. If you see one of these people becoming a product owner, alert the authorities immediately. There are also a number of optional scrum roles that we won't discuss in this presentation, including scrum runner, flanker, center three-quarter, beast master, magician, baker, and Steve. Scrum also calls for a series of meetings that you must attend during your sprint. Before your sprint starts, you will attend the Backlog Grooming Meeting. Your backlog is just the set of all the tickets that you have to work on. This is a meeting for writing tickets, clarifying tickets, chopping up tickets into smaller sub-tickets, prioritizing tickets, and taking tickets out for a date night once in a while so that they feel special. A lot of people in Scrum call tickets stories. This is because they take less than two weeks to finish, have an ending that's satisfying for the product owner, and also because if you fall for more than three of them, you will probably break your legs. The backlog grooming happens before the sprint starts, to prepare everybody for the kickoff. During the kickoff meeting, the product owner is kicked very hard. Then, the team cracks open the backlog in approximate order of priority, and uses planning poker to estimate the difficulty of each task. In planning poker, after hearing the description of each task and asking any clarifying questions, the team all assign the task a difficulty of ace, two, three, five, eight, or king. This also provides the scrum master with a hearty supply of useless four, six, seven, nine, ten jack and queen cards that he can use to erect impressive if delicate structures. Planning poker was universally adopted after planning baccarat was decided to be too complicated for American audiences. Once you've estimated all the stories that you can reasonably finish in a sprint, your team commits to finishing that set of stories. Your velocity is about how many points your team can expect to finish in two weeks. Now that you've committed to a set of stories to complete by the end of your sprint, it's time to get to work. At the beginning of each workday is a stand-up meeting, where team members talk about what they're working on, and any blockers they've experienced. A stand-up is so named because every participant is supposed to be as uncomfortable as possible during the meeting, hopefully keeping its duration below the mandated 15 minutes. Smaller teams are better in Scrum, as large stand-ups quickly become a little more than rapid-fire status updates while everybody rolls their eyes. After the meeting, the Scrum Master should follow up on any blockers. Every day, the Scrum Master should update the number of points left to complete in the iteration, preferably in his most ominous voice. This is called the burndown, because Scrum has a real problem with mixed metaphors. There are lots of software solutions to prepare this data for you automatically, but it's just as easy to keep track of on a big whiteboard with post-it notes. You might have heard of Kanban. What Kanban actually is, 
is a complicated production management system designed by an engineer from Toyota to keep production and inventory synchronized in the complicated, queue-based distributed system of parts involved in manufacturing a car. In the context of Scrum, though, people usually just take a big whiteboard and pretend that Kanban means keeping track of the entire state of your iteration on it. On the last day of your sprint, it's time for your developers to demo their completed features to the product owner and the rest of the team. Finally, to end the sprint is the retrospective. The team talks about things that went well and things that went poorly. If the team delivered all of the stories that they committed to, now would be a good time to eat the delicious donuts of celebration. If the team did not deliver all the stories that they committed to, instead you should eat the less delicious bagels of shame. How many points did you actually complete? As you finish more and more sprints, you'll get a feel for your actual expected velocity, which will be a useful tool going forward. Okay, so buzzword roundup. The product owner helps prioritize and generate stories. The scrum master generates the burndown, reminds everybody of the rules, and often sends sassy emails. A backlog grooming is a meeting for generating, prioritizing, and cleaning up stories, which form the backlog. A kickoff is the meeting at the start of an iteration to estimate stories, and then you use your velocity to commit to a set of stories in the backlog. You know what a stand-up is already. A demo is where you show your features to the team and the product owner, and a retro is where you talk about what worked and what didn't. You update your velocity, and you celebrate with donuts. So thanks to my awesome summarizing skills, you too should be prepared to defeat bureaucracy in your company with seven mandatory meetings per week. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and check out my comic at cubedrone.com.